Hello viewers, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Depends on your time zone of watching this video. I'm Chris Secure Future Village. Breaking news, breaking news, breaking news. This is my channel. In this my channel, I share news content and talk realities out of issues. The international community have revealed that the presidential election that happened February 25th was ring. A lot of violence happened and they have proof and evidence across the states. I next should learn a lesson from vote buying. Let's listen to the international community, what they have to say concerning the presidential election. Thank you, my people. Please share this video to go viral. Thank you. Violence in the 2022 Electoral Act went largely unenforced. The international community failed to credibly use sanctions as a deterrent to violence. And the use of strategic election violence, often along ethnic lines, not only undermined the credibility of the 2023 elections, but will cast a long shadow over future electoral contests. These risks were understood in the lead up to elections, and there were many efforts to mitigate this violence. It is now incumbent on us to reflect on what lessons we have learned. Our program that we deployed in six states in partnership with KDI provides some useful insights. We deployed long-term monitors to every LGA in six states, one state in each region, to provide weekly reports on the electoral context, including election violence and contributing factors. This data was then used to shape activities and interventions of local CSOs and security forces who we felt were best positioned to intervene with key stakeholders in the lead up to elections. In the spirit of learning, I will briefly note a few things that this program and this data gathered has taught us about election violence that will be explored in more depth later. First, we found convincing evidence that LGAs with larger security force presence tended to have significantly less violence. While perhaps logical, it confirms that security forces play a positive mitigating role and underscores the importance of prioritizing where and how many security forces are deployed. Second, on the issue of vote buying, we had hoped to see that more education on vote buying would reduce reports of vote buying. However, the data we gathered shows no apparent relationship, suggesting that education alone is insufficient to change the incentives that drive vote buying. Third, when we analyzed factors that appeared in LGAs which were at first peaceful, but later became violent, we identified some significant early warning indicators. These factors included inadequate security force presence, recruiting of political thugs, and government restrictions on campaigning. These factors underscore the importance of understanding the broader context and the importance of addressing these issues well in advance of elections. As we look back at our efforts and the violence that has occurred, for our program, it is a mixed picture. Unfortunately, election violence increased in almost all the states in Nigeria when we compare the last few months of 2022 with the first few months of 2023. On average, election violence increased by about 13% in each state. For our six states of focus, election violence also increased, but only by about 8.5%. We would like to think that this at least was in part driven by our interventions. Kaduna in particular is a state that many feared would experience significant election violence yet defied expectations and saw no significant increase from 2022 to 2023. In conclusion, we need to be more honest about assessing our efforts to mitigate election violence. We need to seriously address issues of impunity for election violence and for election malfeasance, which creates the conditions for election violence. There also must be accountability, especially for leaders and officials of major political parties who too often get away with using violence and underhanded tactics to gain electoral advantage. When we seek to prevent election violence, we cannot fall back on the things we are familiar with, like national peace pledges and voter education. These efforts alone are insufficient to reduce election violence. We have to move beyond compartmentalization of information among implementers, NGOs, and security services, 
and ensure that information is shared broadly and shared early. Lastly, information must drive action, whether it is the deployment of security forces, undue government restrictions on campaigns, or orchestrated malfeasance by political parties. Early warning is of no use if it does not drive early action. Thank you. Thank you for watching my video. Please share this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. The name of my YouTube channel is Chris Secure Future Village. It's the same name on my page as you are seeing on the screen. Share this video so that Facebook will recommend it to others. For more trendy videos, I will be using my page to update you. Thank you.